Our next presentation will be about the agricultural uh, sector. When uh, we recall the previous uh, three presentations, uh, we can notice that all of the speakers mentioned the role of agriculture, which was indeed uh, very important right now. May I ask uh, Andre Domonkos, Senior Research Fellow of the Budapest Business School, uh, to deliver his presentation on agriculture in the post trianon era of Hungary. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone with high respect uh, uh, at um, our conference on the recovery after Trianon. Um, the title of my presentation is The Impact of the Trian Treaty of Trianon on the Agricultural Sector, Hardship and Slow Recovery. First, uh, I would like to list or make a list of all those circumstances that uh, made uh, dominantly affected the agricultural uh, sector. First, I would like to speak about the dissolution of the Austria-Hungarian monarchy and the impact of the Trianon Treaty on the agricultural sector. I also deem it important to present uh, uh, or to speak about uh, uh, the changed uh, uh, foreign policy or foreign trade conditions after 1918 that also uh, had an impact on the development of the agricultural sector. Later I would like to speak about the Batland era uh, and uh, then about uh, the role of the food industry in the agricultural sector. So first of all, the economic uh, consequences of the dissolution of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. In October 1918, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy was dissolved, uh, and that created an enormous challenge uh, for the agriculture, the agrarian sector. Uh, within the dualist monarchy, Hungary uh, in, exported or transported agricultural products for a huge common market consisting of 50 million people. Uh, uh, and uh, the Hungarian agricultural products, uh, just like, for example, the Czech uh, products uh, were protected. And this is the reason why in October 1918 the diso dissolution of the monarchy created an absolutely unexpected, unprecedented situation. Instead of a protected market, Hungary had to enter, enter the unprotected global market. Uh, Hungary also lost uh, part of its former markets as well. So the other very important factor that determined uh, the fate of that is the peace dictates which of uh, Trianon, which was signed on June the 4th, and as a result of that, the Hungarian uh, uh, kingdom didn't only lose two-thirds of it, but actually more over 70% of its raw materials, and because of uh, the detachment of the areas, there have uh, some serious distortions that happened, and uh, the uh, because of these detachments, there was a one sided production uh, structure, so the processing capacities were concentrated mostly to Budapest and its environment. Uh, the Trianon uh, peace dictate had a very important other consequence, which was the um, economic, which shows the economic um, uh, impact, namely within uh, one uh, um, so, so first, by dissolving the Zeolis monarchy, you can see the uh, economic uh, uh, changes and also uh, the uh, po political and geographical changes. As a result of that, the best uh, Hungarian uh, 
areas for producing grains were taken away and Hungary therefore was uh, in the need of import and the major factor of that had to, to be performed by the agricultural expert in between the two world wars. Let's see how the uh, peace treaty or what the peace treaty, uh, what kind of impact it had on the Hungarian economy. On the whole we can say that the uh, various um, detachments, uh, actually the territorial detachments uh, changed the, the structure. So compared to the 45%, the arable land increased um, to 60%. But this positive development was counterbalanced by the fact that the our best, struck, best quality uh, uh, grain uh, producing land like Bachka and Banat were uh, taken away by another country. As a result of that, the agricultural production has become more intensive. But it was also an important uh, fact that the meadows and grasslands uh, decreased in proportion. However, the grape uh, decreasing increased by double and about 80 percent uh, of the uh, Sand grapes remained on the territory of Hungary, but actually the surplus wine export was sustainable only with a major, a major support of the state. Animal husbandry, there were huge losses here as well. Primarily, it meant that most of the very fertile mountain um, um, pastures were left outside Hungary and those that were left in, in Hungary were of better, of worse quality. And of course there was much less bovine and more pig population. Although in, in between the two world wars uh, there was a positive move to be seen in terms of the species. Like, for example, the sheep, the proportion of merino sheep from 30% before the dualism increased to 70%. But on the whole, we can say that animal husbandry, although it has become more intensive than at the detached areas, but the circumstances were more difficult and everything was more costly. The next uh, chart shows that in the time after 1920, for there were much more people who were not having anything and uh, um, providing themselves by daily work only than the ones who were actually holders of, uh, uh, of holdings. So that means that about 70% of the agricultural of people working in agriculture were mostly uh, workers, ordinary workers. And the minor holdings proportion was also very high in comparison to all the population making their living from agriculture. This was about 52%. So let's see what are the major or significant changes in agriculture after World War II. So the overseas competitor grain exporting countries dynamically increased their crops and taking advantage of a very special economic boom and the opportunities that were offered to them. They increased their grain producing area significantly and the proportion of the grain uh, producing area de was decreased by 11% uh, in between 1920 and 24. The same applies to animal husbandry as well because um, the um, United States, Argentina, Australia and Canada became the uh, biggest um, suppliers and their animal, uh, the number of, of uh, the, and their, um, their animal husbandry also increased. In Hungary, however, the, there's a key role of agriculture export in the foreign trade because it created uh, the need which was needed for a foreign trade balance and that also 
increase the global competition due to the loss of protected markets. So it was a protected market, but then uh, Hungary got into the uh, great uh, market out there where it found its experts, uh, its, um, its com competitors from the major powers. This uh, situation was even further exacerbated by the fact that uh, in the central and uh, eastern European area, the former Austro-Hungarian monarchist revision, they thought this was a tool of that, so it was an inward moving, self-supplying, protectionist trading policy, and this has inhibited the real growth of uh, the export. What important uh, government measures were taken in order to uh, help this sector? It was in 1920 when the parliament approved the land reform because neither the Karoi government nor the Bolshevik dictatorship, the Council Republic, did not perform the agriculture reform. So that is why in 1920, in order to widen the societal basis of the Horti era, the parliament approved of the land reform, but the original concept was worked out by Dula Robinek, uh, Minister of uh, Agriculture. However, he maintained the latifundia system because he thought that it will have more uh, better results and providing more working opportunities and uh, providing also more revenues for the budget. But the István Szabó Nagyatádi, who supported more the radical land distribution, so he th thought that uh, he wanted to increase uh, the 100 uh, cadastral land from 50% of the current situation into 30%. So let's see what kind of results did this land reform have. Uh, contrary to uh, the public law, this land reform of 1920 did not set any maximum of the size of the holding, and uh, they, uh, of course, announced that the compensation right of the com uh, right, and about two thirds in uh, was uh, given to the owners in cash, and one third by bonds. And about one, hardly one tenth of the overall uh, air territory was improved. So 700,000 hectares were given to 400,000 of uh, peasant families. So it was 1.1 hectare per family, which means that it was actually about 25 to 30 hectares, which could have given a proper and decent living for a farmer. But 1.7 hectare size of a minor holding was not even enough for a self sufficient uh, family uh, working. So these were absolutely unviable and also a major part of the distributed area was not on a proper uh, field. And uh, those who were given this land, those were actually uh, widows of military personnel or absolutely lacking all knowledge about agriculture. And uh, despite this uh, land reform, uh, one-sided uh, holding structure remains, so that means that the holders after 1920 owned 41 percent of the arable land, which means which applied to those uh, holdings that were bigger than 100 hectares. So on the whole, however, we can say that the land reform had several positive elements because the Hungarian government did not leave anybody behind, but they provided all kinds of uh, um, be benefits to them. Between 1920 and 1922, there were about 140 million crown preferential loans 
loans given for these people to buy uh, tractors, and then altogether one million uh, pengu, which was uh, the currency of the time, to get animals for, uh, for, for breeding. What kind of um, uh, uh, actions were taken in the time of the Bethlehem uh, period. It was uh, to create, uh, it was Bethlehem's uh, consolidation policy, who thought that the uh, economic policy had to be developed. He had uh, the principle of import. Uh, Import uh, uh, high import prices as well, and uh, also the general customs tariff system, which uh, created 30 uh, percent of uh, of uh, import protection. Like for example, that was actually supporting the light industry activities. But in this period of time, the Hungarian agriculture's development was largely influenced by the fact that uh, industrial products prices increased much bigger than the agriculture products. So the gap between industry and agriculture was ever bigger, which had a very disadvantage impact on the agriculture producers. But when we think about the agriculture productivity in the, in the early in the early 1920s, we can say that agriculture production went through some major turmoils back in the 1920s, and hereby I mean the economic chaos, the council republic, and the communist gangs uh, recreation and also the Serbian and the Romanian occupation, because both the Serbians and the Romanians had delivered out uh, all kinds of agriculture products from the country uh, without any uh, any any mo money to be given. So that is why in 1920, the agriculture production only reached one-fifth of the pre-war period, and uh, it took many years before it could get back to the original level, and this applied to the quantity of the produce as well, because uh, also the produce, agriculture produce and production was only about 50 or 60 percent of the last year before the First World War. So that all shows that the Hungarian agriculture went through some major turmoils between 1918 to 1920. Uh, the, the, for the agricultural export, the, for the agriculture, the export uh, were, had a pivotal role because they had to create the revenues of, of foreign currency because the uh, internal surplus was uh, very low so Hungarian economy needed the uh, money tremendously for machinery and also some ex import and the next uh, picture shows uh, a very well operating uh, larger holding as as a result of the Betlan uh, government, there was actually quite a, a small scale of development, especially for those who were intensively uh, managing their holdings, medium or large size. So that means that uh, between 1920 and 29, the number of tractors increased by six and some other uh, agricultural machinery also appeared. Either the mechanization or soil uh, management, uh, but this uh, next picture shows a smallholder's uh, family. That means that the overall uh, cultivation were mostly done by human or animal forces. So the soil management, the mechanization, there was hardly any step forward in between the two world wars, however. But when we look at the measures of the Batlan, 
uh, government, it is important to note that in between the 1920 and 21, the Batlan government was taking advantage of the economic boom, so it was given unvalorized loans to the agriculture, which is very important because the, uh, the peasants were given products instead of uh, for, for products for their loans, and thus they got rid of their loans. The Bethlehem government was actually providing a lot of uh, loans for the agriculture back in the 1920s, and it was by 1923 that the new uh, that the real um, good uh, economic agriculture economic development takes place and uh, 1926 on June the 30th a long term League of Nations loan they pursued the stabilization of the state economy although the cons next to the consolidation a major part of the nation, uh, League of Nations was used for the modernizing the uh, public administration and other state uh, infrastructure work as well. But uh, for the agriculture, they were also given some compensation, which was largely given to the large holders. At the beginning of the 19th, 20s, uh, uh, the export markets were still open. Uh, Austria and Czechia was the most important from that, but the most favorable trends, which were to be seen at the beginnings of the 1920s, they changed from 1925. And as the Hungarian economy recovered, and most of the countries uh, were not suffering from the economic hardships, and the agriculture was also growing. Our uh, markets uh, uh, overseas were also shrinking, which uh, made the uh, growth of the expert also quite uh, impossible. What is, however, very important uh, is to talk about the food industry, because back in 1929, uh, 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 the food industry uh, was uh, taking a major role. The bakery, milling industry, as a result of the Trianon Treaty, and the restricted internal market and intensifying global competition, but the intellectual research base of the Hungarian milling industry remained. But during the dualism time, uh, this intellectual research base meant that after the, the Trianon Treaty, a lot of new technical innovations were introduced, like the fariograph, by which they could determine the bakery industry value of the grain. But uh, when the uh, areas were detached, both the milling industry and the sugar industry had to face the lack of capacity. The bakery industry was very closely connected to the milling industry, and there was a major need for these baked products as urbanization progressed and sugar industry that also had to face the same problems after the new uh, after 1920 at the new area of the country like the milling industry so a lot of unused production capacity had to close down and also the export could only be done because in Hungary they were not uh, using so much sugar but the export could be done by states by the help of state subsidies meat industry uh, it was was quite slow, and at the beginning of the 1920s, they had to provide uh, it for the families, and it was only from the mid 1920s that that was um, uh, a start of the increasing demand for quality products. 
It was uh, an increasing role of poultry processing and that was producing for Hungary and also for the export. The milk, the dairy industry, it was a success story because in 1922 the Hungarian Dairy Production Center was established and milk cooperative networks were established as the internal demand was growing for dairy products. Next to uh, the uh, milk production, canning industry was also very important, especially the canneries in Budapest and the Danube Tisza Interfluv and the Great Plain. And just as uh, uh, fruit and tomato canning doubled. But in the beer industry, it, the biggest problem was that there was a significant drop of uh, consumption, and that is why about 80 85 percent of the uh, beer of uh, brewery capacity remained in Hungary, but there was no purchase power for that. So brewing industry was losing its momentum. So in 1926, the beer consumption per capita was only seven liters in the Hungary after Trianon. So what kind of um, conclusions uh, can we draw with regards to the economy? So the first one would be that the, the, the dualist monarchy uh, uh, collapsed and from a protected market, Hungary got, found itself on the global market and uh, our most important uh, opportunities cease to exist and only by strict uh, duties and by other foreign currency related act, acts could we perform a bit better. And no matter how intensive the agriculture activity got, if our best grain producing areas, Bacca, Bana, Cholokas, were given to the successor states. So the biggest problem is that uh, using raw materials and the best uh, agricultural land, a uh, loss, of, loss of property was also to be seen. So the internal market was shrinking. So the purchase power, because of the purchase power, there was no demand of this produce and product. In the period after 1918, the foreign economy as well changed. The overseas, the major grain producing and animal breeding countries appeared who could do these agriculture activities at a much lower cost than in Hungary. And the situation was further exacerbated by the fact that the successor states of Europe uh, had the uh, they thought that uh, this uh, would be to have uh, the, dual, the restoration of the dualist system, so that's why they were kind of inward-looking uh, agriculture for simply for self-support. Uh, uh, so self, uh, Batlan's consideration policy, however, was stabilizing Hungary, so this uh, long-term uh, uh, League of Nations loan, the state budget, Budget was consolidated, inflation was uh, curbed, and in order to help the agriculture, the Batlan government was providing a lot of loans and benefits for the uh, peasants and for the medium and large size holdings as well. That is why for the medium and large size uh, holdings one can see a bit, improve, a bit of improvement in the field of uh, uh, soil management and mechanization as well. So on the whole one can say that the agriculture has determined primarily also the position and the situation of the national of, of the state's uh, overall uh, uh, conditions and circumstances because it was the agricultural activity that had to perform the foreign currency revenue for the country. And of course, uh, as the, uh, the industry needed that, so that's why the agriculture had to provide for the 
um, for the foreign currency that was then to support the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Docent Domonkos for this wonderful presentation. Taking stock of the losses, Chalokas, Bachka, Banat, uh, uh, and uh, the, for the recovery, I think the role of the state was very important because in 1918, 19, a collapse from the monarchy, uh, Hungary becoming uh, independent, a lot of various states, and of course they could not show the normal uh, operations either. But here we can see that wine producing or beer producing, which otherwise would be a well operating activity, but still they needed the state's intervention as well. Because here we heard about some employment problems, inward looking uh, Central European states as well, and such government measures which all raise the question, so what is the role of the state in a crisis situation like that? So for me, this was the most important takeaway.